okay, let's try to see a different proof, proof number two. Personally, I like proof number two more. Okay, proof number two. Okay, so because we have GCD, BN is equal to one. So we will have what? B GCD, what is the definition of GCD? GCD, GCD, or GCD is the what? Smallest linear, in, smallest positive linear combination of the value of B and N, right? Okay, we don't need the smallest here. We just need, it is a linear combination. So, so therefore, there exists some number, let's say, let's say X and Y, such that B times X plus N times Y, so this is the linear combination of B and N, is equal to one. Is that okay? Is that okay? Okay, so x is the same as, so we will have what? So we will have b, x will be the same as 1 modulo n. Okay, how, how, how do you get this? So, so you so we we start with this formula, right? Bx plus my is equal to one. So they are the same. They are the same value. They are the value. So so if Bx plus my is equal to one, then Bx plus my must be congruent to one modulo n. Does that make sense? Is that okay? R right? And then n is congruent to zero modulo n. So this is going to be congruent to bx plus zero. Is that okay? And bx plus zero has the same value as bx. Is that okay? So this is the arithmetic equal, okay. So we will have bx is congruent to one modulo n. Is that okay? Does that make sense? Okay, good. So we have bx is congruent to one modulo n. Now, since, since what? Since BC is equal to BD modulo n, okay, let's multiply x on both sides. We will have x times b times c is equal to x times b times d modulo n. Is that okay? Is that okay? And what is xb? xb is bx, right? Oh. xb, xb is bx. So you, the same same value, right? xb is bx. So this is equal to one. One times c is the same as one times d mod n. So we get the result. Okay. Okay. So here, this is why I like this proof a lot. So first of all, we are not viewing. So we, we are not looking at a, a result like, like n divides b times c minus d, and then there is no common factor between b and n, so that n will divide c minus d. So this needs some other reasoning. What we need here is that we need the definition of GCD only. So the definition of GCD is it is the smallest positive linear combination. So we have this one, and then we have this one, and then, and then, and then we have this one. And then everything is done by multiplication. So we will see that the reason why we can cancel b on both sides, we are not doing division. We are multiplying them by the same value, x. And then this x has magic property that when x is multiplied with b, it will become 1. Okay. 
So we have the effect of doing division, but we're actually doing multiplication. Is that okay? So for this reason, okay, so that's why I, I like this proof much. Okay, one thing to talk about is, okay, so here, so here, this is, so here, when we, when we have GCD of B and N is equal to one, we call a number, the number X, okay, X such that Bx is equal to one more n. We call it. We give it a name. We call it the inverse. The inverse of B modulo n. Is that okay? So the inverse here is a multiplicative inverse. So you can have at additive inverse, but here it is a multiplicative inverse. Okay, so so maybe you, you want to say so more. This is a multiplicative inverse. Okay. Of B modulo N. Okay. And usually we would denote this X as multiplicative. Okay, so we would denote this as B to the power minus one. Okay. And then we know what? We know whenever B and N has no common divisor, such an inverse must exist. Okay, so you, you, you can write down B, and so B inverse exists. So apply B inverse on both sides, multiply them together, then we, we cancel the B. So this is what we can write down in, in the proof. Okay. Okay, so, okay, good. Now, So next, let's take a look of a modular arithmetic for a special type of n. Let's use prime number as the n that we are looking at. So we are going to look at mod p arithmetic. And we will introduce a theorem called Fermat's little theorem. So first of all, okay, here. Yeah. Mm, let's try this one. Okay, so. Okay, so suppose that, okay, suppose that P is a prime and then K is some number not multiple of P and K is some number, mm. K is some number not a multiple of p so so with can you see this yeah so, sorry so you have two number p is a prime k is a number not related to p not divisible by p okay then then the number zero times k, one times k, okay, two times k, up to p minus one times k, they will have different remainder. They will have different remainders when divided by p. Okay, so this is the uh, result. They have the same dif different remainder. All of them will have different remainders. All of them. Okay, so zero times k will be zero, right? So the remainder when you divide it by p, it is equal to zero, right? Okay, one dot k, you don't know, but when you divide by p, you have a certain remainder. Every number here, we need to choose a different remainder. Okay, 
And why? 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 So <coughs> we can prove this by contradiction. So if there are two numbers here, we have the same remainder. Let's call it i times k and j. Suppose that two numbers, let's say i, i times k and j times k, they have the same remainder. So, so we are going to prove by contradiction. So if not, what will happen? Then we will have i times k and j times k. We have the same remainder, modulo p, right? Is that OK? But then GCD k and p has, is equal to 1. So we can have a multiplicative inverse for k. So we multiply k inverse on both sides. What do we get? We will have i is equal to j, right? And then it is impossible, OK? Because the difference between i and j is always between, always less than 2p greater than minus 2p. Uh, sorry, always less than p greater than minus p. And then i and j are different, so it is impossible, OK? So impossible, impossible. Contradiction. OK? Now, OK, so, so what do we have? Now, we can prove Fermat's little theorem. So let me describe what is Fermat's little theorem. So what is it? Fermat's little theorem says, OK, so we start with the prime p. Okay, suppose that A and P are co-prime. Suppose that the GCD of a number A and P is equal to 1. Then we will have A to the power P minus 1 is always congruent to 1 modulo OK, so how do we prove? OK, how do we prove? <coughs> so we look at the numbers. We look at the numbers. We look at the numbers. OK, 0 times a, 1 times a, 2 times a, up to p minus 1 times a. Is that okay? And let's take a look of the remainder. Okay. So, so this is the number here, and then what is the remainder? So zero times a, the remainder will be zero. Okay. So this is remainder when we are talking about modulo p arithmetic. Modulo p. Is that okay? Or maybe I'll just write down. Yeah. So you know, you understand what I'm saying. So this is going to be zero. Is that okay? One times a, two times a, p minus one times a. They will have remainders all different, and they are not the same as zero. Is that okay? So they are all having different remainders, and it is not the same as zero. So one of them, I don't know. One of them will have one. One of them will have two. One of them will have three. One of them will have four and so on and so forth, one of them will have p minus 1. Is that OK? So for all these numbers, the remainder will, will, be, will, be chosen from, will be chosen from this set. Exactly one of them is 1, exactly one of them is 2, exactly one of them is 3, and exactly one of them is p minus 1. OK? OK? OK, so, so what do we have? Then, then, then what do we have? Then let's multiply them together. Forget about this zero 
times a. Forget about zero times a. Let's multiply everything together. So on the left hand side, this one, if we multiply everything here together, what do we have? We will have something like p minus one factorial, right? Times a to the power p minus one. Is that okay? Is that okay? But then, because if you still remember, a number is having the same, is treated as the same as its remainder. When you're talking about, when we are talking about modulo p arithmetic, so this will be equal to this p minus one factorial modulo p. Is that okay? If you are okay with this, could you please raise your hand? Okay, good. P minus one factorial, this is a number, you don't have any factor of P. You can't find any factor of P. P does not divide one, P does not divide two, P does not divide three, P does not divide P minus one. And P is already a prime, you cannot make it smaller, okay? So this number is co-prime with P. GCD of this number is co-prime with P. So there is an inverse of this number that, that you can apply so that to make it one, okay? You apply the, you multiply the inverse of this number on left hand side, right hand side, you will get this, this, this result. Is that okay? Is that okay? Okay, so let's make sure we really understand. Let's try, let's try what? Let's try, Let's try to plug in some number. So let's say this time let's choose p is equal to 7. 7 is a prime, right? Let's choose a is equal to 3. Then what, what we are going to consider? So we are going to consider division by 7. So we will have 1 times 3, 2 times 3, 3 times 3, 4 times 3, 5 times 3, 6 times 3. Is that okay? And then if you look at the remainder, Modulo seven, one times three is three, so the remainder will be three. Two times three is six, so if you divide by seven, the remainder is six, is that okay? Three times three, two, is that okay? Four times three, so actually, haha, you can get it easily. This is one times three, you add three, so you get six. Six add three, you get nine, right? Nine, nine is equal to two, so the next one is going to be five. So the next one is going to be one, and the next one is going to be four. Is that okay? So all of them are distinct. And you, you don't have a zero, because zero is reserved for zero times three. Is that okay? So if you multiply them together, you will get six factorial times three to the power six is equal to two six factorial modulo seven. But what we care is about three to the power six. So what is three to the power six? Three to the power six, so this is the natural arithmetic equal. Three to the power six is equal to what? what what's that? Seven to nine, something like this? Okay, seven to nine. If you divide it by seven, you will have a remainder one. Is that okay? So this is something like this. Okay. So it is not, so this is how how we are applying this, but let's check. Okay, so how about one to the power six? Let's look at mod seven. So one to the power six is equal to one, so it is equal to one mod seven. Is that okay? Let's also take a look of two to the power six. So two to the power six is equal to 64, right? And then it is equal to one mod seven. So three to the power six, we are done. So three to the power six, we know that it is equal to one. Okay, four to the power six. Okay, four to the power six is equal to two to the power six times two to the power six. So this is equal to one times one, and then it is equal to one, mod seven. Is that okay? How about five to the power six? Well, five to the power six is equal to minus two to the power six, right? Is that okay? Minus two to the power six. So minus two to the power six, this number arithmetically it is equal to two to the power six, and then two to the power six is equal to one. Okay, and then how about six to the power six? Okay, six to the power six, easy. 
think minus 1 to the power 6. Is that OK? And then this is exactly equal to 1. OK, so we, we have all, all the cases. Is that OK? OK. So this is the Fermat's little theorem. OK, and, and what? OK, some people wants to, so wants to remove the condition. So here we are talking about the condition that you need to consider integers a and p, they are co-prime. So some people try to make it a little bit general. So there is a different description of the mass little theorem. So some people say, so this is another variation. Let p be a prime. And A, okay, this A can be any integer. Then we will have A to the power P is always the same as A modulo P. Okay. Well, so first of all, we can do this by two cases. Okay, there are two cases. One is A is having GCD one with P. A is co-prime. So if it is co-prime, then we will have A P minus one is equal to one. So you multiply A on both sides, we will have A P is equal to A. Is that okay? How about the other case? So the other case is the GCD of A P is not equal to one. Now if the GCD of A P is not equal to one, what does that mean? A and P, GCD is not equal to 1. What can it be? What can it be? If, two, if a number has a greatest common of divisor with P, it is not equal to 1, then what can it be? It must be P, because P has only two factors, 1 and P itself. So if the GCD is not 1, it must be P, right? So if GCD of AP is equal to P, then what does that mean? That means that A itself is a multiple of P then you have, in that case, this part is a multiple of P. This part is a multiple of P. So it, you have zero is the same as zero, modulo P. Okay, so, so we have this Fermat's little theorem. Okay, finally, yeah, I want to talk about one more theorem before we leave. <coughs> this is another theorem. It's called the Wilson theorem. So Wilson's theorem says, it says that, okay, m minus 1 factorial is equal to minus 1 mod m if and only if M is a prime. Okay, we don't have time to explain the proof today. I'll leave it next time. But what is the implication of this Wilson's theorem? So, so let, let's take a look. Okay, let's try some number. Okay, okay, maybe let's try M is equal to 7. Okay, and find out what is 6 factorial. 6 factorial is equal to what? 6 factorial is equal to 720, right? And if you divide it by 7, the remainder is 6. Because 721 is a multiple of 7, okay? So this is okay. This works. And then let's try another number. Let's say 8. Okay, 8 is not a, a, a prime, right? So let's try to find out what is 7 factorial modulo 8. Okay, and then 7 factorial, oh, 7 factorial, what is that? We multiply this by 7, right? It's like 5, 0, 4, 0, is it? 7. Right. Yeah, something like this, okay? You divide it by 8. Let's find out the remainder. So you divide it by 8, oh, okay. So you divide it by 8, you will have 6. You get 48. Oh, 24. 
done. So, so, so you have three and then you have zero. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, it should be divisible by eight because you have a two, you have a four inside this seven factorial. So, it is e so in that case, it is not equal to minus one. It is not equal to seven. So this can be used as a criteria to check if a number is prime or not. Okay, but this is very, very slow. The reason is that you need to compute n minus 1 factorial before doing that. And computation of this n minus 1 factorial, it takes all the m time, which is exponential in the problem size. So this is a way to check if a number is prime or not, but this is not an efficient way. But Wilson's theorem has some application. We will, we will perhaps design it as a homework. For, for you. But here, okay. this is an interesting fact. Okay, so we will talk about the proof of this one next time. So let's meet again next Tuesday. Thanks. Uh -huh.